we talked about eating the bread of life and drinking the living water. So what is left to bring about the spiritual living being? Living beings must also breathe in the breath of life. In scripture, we'll see that there is a holy wind that blows called the Ruach. In Hebrew, Ruach can just be a wind or it can be the Holy Spirit of God. When God speaks, his breath goes out to create something new and to do work for him. Uh, first, uh, 2 Timothy 3.16 All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. The inspiration of God means that he breathed it in and out. Okay? Now, this is the New Testament, so it was written in Greek, and the word there is theonoustos, and that means God breathed. Ezekiel 37, 1, The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out, of the spirit, out in the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and indeed they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O Lord, you know. Again he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus, they, uh, thus says the Lord God to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. Now we all know that this is a uh, set of verses about Israel's rebirth. After 70 AD, it was destroyed. So this, is, this was the 1948 coming together of their nation. But also we could, we could read this in the same uh, form by looking at the uh, uh, rapture in the days that we're called out of the grave and breath comes into our bodies. Notice here Ezekiel is told to repeat God's words and by Ezekiel prophesying over the bones they would come to life. God's breath brings life. This passage is about the rebirth of Israel as a country but it follows the spiritual pattern throughout the Bible as God breathed words brings life. You repeating the same words of God has power over any situation. If you read this carefully, could this also be about the rapture? Ezekiel 37, verse 6. I will put sinews on you to bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise, and suddenly a rattling, and the bones came together bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. Also he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. And every instance of breath there is, is the same as the theonoustos or the Ruach, if it was in Hebrew. Verse 10, So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived and stood up on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Verse 11, Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. So he's telling you what this prophecy is about. They indeed say, Our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we are, ourselves are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. So he is talking about opening graves now. And of course, our spiritual Israel is heaven. That's the promised land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up from your graves. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live, and I will place, in you, place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. The breath gives us understanding. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. Job 32, verse 8. But there is a spirit in a man, and the breath of the Almighty gives him understanding. John 20, verse 21. 
So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you, as the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. So here he is breathing on them and giving him his spirit so that they can go out and, and convert people and do the work of the church. Luke 24, 45. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. So he can also breathe on us to have us understand the scriptures. Uh, the Holy Spirit is our teacher and our comforter. Uh, and this is the advantage that we have over a non-believer. The breath of God gives order to chaos. So I prophesied as I was commanded. This is Ezekiel 37, 7. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise and suddenly a rattling and the bones came together bone to bone. Psalm 33, verse 6. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Just speaking, the stars and the universes came into being. Isaiah 55, 11. So shall my word be that goes, out, goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the things for which I sent it. Because God has spoken these words that are in the Bible, when you speak them, it will carry out his will in the word, world. When you prophesy the word of God over a situation, there is nothing too hard for God, and his word will not return void no matter what your eyes see and your flesh thinks. The breath of God gives us strength. Ezekiel 37, 8. Indeed, as I looked, over, looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. Psalm eighteen fifteen. Then the channels of the sea were seen, and the foundations of the world were uncovered. At your rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils. Verse 16. He sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters. Uh, verse 17. He delivered me from my strong enemy, from those who hated me, for, for they were too strong for me. We need this breath to do the work of God in our lives. Exodus 15, 3. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Everywhere you see Lord here is, is Jehovah or Yahweh. Uh, Pharaoh's chariots and his army he cast into the sea. His chosen captains are also drowned in the Red Sea. The depths have covered them and they sank to the bottom like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, has become glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, has dashed the enemy in pieces. And I, I like to think that they might be referring to his right hand, and that would be his breath. Because his breath is what gets the work of God done. When the, breath, uh, when the Holy Spirit was hovering over the waters, that's where he brought life into the creation. And when the, when the Holy Spirit was hovering over Mary, that's when she got pregnant with Jesus. So I believe that his right hand could be another term of his holy breath. Um, Exodus 15, verse 7. And in the greatness of your excellence, you have overthrown those who rose against you. You sent forth your wrath. It consumed them like stubble. You notice here that he's talking about that uh, his breath uh, came to overthrow people that had gone against him. Not necessarily his people. But he thought it was uh, bad for Pharaoh to come uh, against him. Verse uh, Exodus 15, 8. And with the blast of your nostrils, the waters were gathered together. The floods stood upright like a heap. The depths congealed in the heart of the sea. So there's a flood standing upright. It came to a halt and stood upright for God's breath. The enemy said, I will pursue. I will overtake. I will divide the spoil. That's what Satan says to you every day when he gets up. My desire shall be satisfied on them. I will draw my sword. My hand shall destroy them. Verse 15, uh, Exodus 15, 10. You blew with your wind, the sea covered them, they sank like lead in the mighty waters. The breath of God is the method God uses to get things done. When he speaks, it becomes so. Just breathing, he can defeat your enemies, and he can birth in you something new, like was done with Mary. The Holy Spirit is the breath of God that creates by his will. 
that brought the universe into being, that brought life into Adam, and defeated Pharaoh and his army. The same breath was given in Acts 2, and lives in you now if you belong to God. It's because of this same Holy Spirit living in you that ensures that you will be resurrected from the grave, just as Jesus came from the grave in a new glorified body. It's all done by the breath of heaven. Acts 1 verse 8, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. You can't do anything in the spirit realm without the breath of God living in you. We all need power to operate in the spirit world. How can we serve God in, his, in building his church if we don't have his spirit living in us? And we have been talking about before, the word of God is our power to be a soldier for Christ. We're in a war of words with an enemy that uses words against us. That is the spiritual battlefield. Speaking the word of God not our words is our defense and manner of offense against our enemy. The breath of God gives life. Ezekiel 37.10 So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet an exceedingly great army. Ezekiel said what God said, and things changed. His repeating God's words brought life into the bones. 2 Peter 1.19 And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation, for prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So Peter is confirming that the only way these books were ever written is they had the Holy Spirit come into them and give them exactly what to write down, even to the punctuation. When you speak God's word over your family, your finances, or your marriage, or any situation, it is as if God was speaking over it. The power to complete God's word is in God's breath. Genesis 2.7 and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Job 33, 4. The Spirit of God hath made me, and the breath of Almighty hath given me life. So it's all throughout the Bible that the breath of God gives life to something that's dead. 2 Timothy tells us that Scripture is God-breathed. Does that mean that Scriptures give me life? You can't have a spiritual life without breathing in the scriptures. There is a difference between reading the Bible and eating it and drinking it and breathing it in. God's word is for our spirit and our soul and not our flesh. By breathing in God's word, we receive spiritual life just as Adam became a living soul as God breathed into him. When God speaks, what sounds do he, does he make? Exodus 19:16. Then it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunderings and lightnings and a thick cloud on the mountain. And the sound of the trumpet was very loud, so that all the people who were in the camp trembled. Now they're hearing thunderings and lightnings and the sound of a trumpet. And it was so loud it scared them. Verse 17. And Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet with God, and they stood at the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was completely in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. Its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mountain quaked greatly. And when it's talked about the smoke of the furnace, I had a vision of a rocket, like a Saturn V rocket, and how it shakes your chest and moves the ground. This was not just like a campfire. This was like a jet engine or a rocket motor going off on this mountaintop. Verse 19, And when the blast of the trumpet sounded long and became louder and louder, Moses spoke and God answered him by a voice. Now also this is tied in to uh, the Feast of Trumpets because I believe that when we're raptured we're going to hear a trumpet. And it says when the blast of the trumpet sounded long and became louder and louder. The last trump that the Bible talks about is on the Feast of Trumpets. And that's when this will happen. Then the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mountain 
And the Lord called Moses to the top of the mountain, and Moses went up. And the Lord said to Moses, Go down and warn the people lest they break through to gaze at the Lord, and many of them perish. Also let the priests who come near the Lord consecrate themselves, lest the Lord break out against them. Verse 23, But Moses said to the Lord, The people cannot come up to the Mount Sinai, for you warned us, saying, Set bounds around the mountain and consecrate it. Then the Lord said to him, Away, get down, and then come up you and Aaron with you. But do not let the priest and the people break through the camp to the Lord, lest he break out against them. So Moses went down to the people and spoke to them. The people that were meant to hear God heard his voice, but the others heard thunder, wind, or trumpets. That's very important. He can speak to one person when he wants to, or he can speak to everyone and they all hear. But others heard thunder, wind, or trumpets. Revelation 4.1 After these things I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. The door is Jesus. At the first voice, and the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come up here, and I will show you things which must take place after this. You'll find several places in Revelation and throughout the Bible saying voices sounded like trumpets and thunder. Some say rushing water. Some say they heard a voice, but other people with them say they just heard thunder. In the account of raising Lazarus from the grave, we know Jesus addressed Lazarus alone, or the whole graveyard would have responded to his voice. The others didn't or couldn't hear and understand the command. In my opinion, when the last trumpet blows and we are changed in the twinkling of an eye, a Christian with the Holy Spirit will hear a voice like a trumpet telling them to come up here, and others will hear thunder and won't rise. On that day of the rapture, the ones that are left behind are going to think there's a storm coming, and there will be. Many places in Scripture refer to an unnamed servant. Many times we can substitute Holy Spirit there to understand the spiritual message God is trying to convey. Now, some servants are named, but if it's an unnamed servant, we have to uh, substitute the Holy Spirit there to see if that's what he's talking about. And as in, the best example in the Bible is in Genesis 24.1. Now Abraham was old, well advanced in age, and the Lord had blessed him uh, in all things. So Abraham said to the oldest servant of his house who ruled over all that he had, please put your hand under my thigh. Now everybody is going to say, well I know Eliezer was the oldest servant in his house because in Genesis 15 it told us that. We don't know that this is the same servant. We don't know anything about it. But everywhere in Genesis 24, he's not named. Uh, Genesis 24, 3. And I will make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that you shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell. So he is giving a job to his servant to go pick out a wife for his son Isaac, which is a picture, a type and shadow of Jesus in Genesis. And he's going to go have to go to his home country because he doesn't want to take any wives from the Canaanites. Genesis 24, 4. But you shall go into my country and to my family and take a wife for my son Isaac. So this has to be a member of his family somewhere. That's why a Gentile has to be grafted in or adopted into God's family. Or you can't be the bride of Christ. Genesis 24, 5. And the servant said to him, Perhaps the woman will not be willing to follow me into this land. Must I take your son back to the land from which you came? But Abraham said to him, Beware that you do not take my son back there. This is a spiritual picture of God sending the Holy Spirit to call the bride of Christ to himself. He requires that we be from his home country, spiritual Israel. From his family, we must be adopted into God's family as Jacob adopted the Gentile children of Joseph. It also pictures the Holy Spirit delivering the bride of Christ to Jesus, and Jesus not coming to the earth again to get his bride. If you'll uh, read on in the story, the, the, uh, the bride and the servant come to Isaac, and he is in the field. And it's very important that he's in the field, because that is a uh, picture of the month of Elul, when the king is in the field. 
The second coming will be after the wedding as Jesus comes to redeem his property from Satan and rule and reign for a thousand years. The words in the Bible were, read, were God breathed. Until Jesus Christ returns, we have his spirit living in us and his words live in us with his spirit. Getting the word of God inside us needs to be a priority so that we can have power to do his will on earth. Understanding the spiritual message God gave his people will help us to discern truth from a lie and false prophets so that we will not be the elect that can be fooled in the last days. We talked before about going uh, without bread for 40 or more days and water for six or seven days, but how long can we live without breath? Having the Holy Spirit inside of us is mandatory for any hope of a spiritual life. Scripture tells us that the Holy Spirit is our down payment for heaven. If Satan marks his people with the number of his name, has God marked his people with the Holy Spirit? When you receive the Holy Spirit, you are marked as God's people to be taken out before the wrath of God falls upon the earth dwellers. Uh, earth dwellers is a term of people that aren't going. They want to stay here. They're carnal people. They don't think of themselves as heavenly bound. They don't think of the kingdom of God, so they're going to stay on earth. You are marked to be citizens of God's kingdom and are not the children of God's wrath. Without the Holy Spirit, the earth is your home and it is doomed to be burned up along with all the rest of the earth dwellers. Earth dwellers will not go to heaven. We are aliens in a strange land. We are citizens of a kingdom not of this earth. John 18, verse 36. Now this is when he's talking to uh, Pilate. Jesus is talking to Pilate. Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. Next time we'll discuss spiritual rocks and stones. Thank you.